Mistakes? You did more than make mistakes, Shadow. I pulled out my plasma rifle and watched as Stardust tried to land a hoof on doorstop. He dodged under the blow, taking hold of his foreleg and flipping the Pegasus around, throwing him right into the air at Solstice, yelling, Bam! Zoom! Straight to the bitch! Solstice ignored his dickish statement and did a somersault in the air, bringing her rear hooves down to strike Stardust in the face. Stardust was slammed to the ground, he jumped back to his hooves and yelled, You motherfuckers really think you can win? Star Laser fired a rifle shot at Stardust. It slammed into his combat armor, throwing him back again. Seems to be working, little bird. Stardust flew into the air with a demonic look in his face. The place where Laser's shot hit was scorched and up, but undamaged. Oh, you think so, do ya? He dove at Laser. She tried to hit him again with her rifle, but he dodged each shot. She jumped out of the way at the last moment, but the moment she roundhouse hooved Stardust in his side, sending him flying up against the ground, barely avoiding a hoof strike to the head. Stardust got up. You bitch. You're gonna pay for that. Laser readied her fighting stance and beckoned Stardust over to her. Come on, little bird. Stardust flew straight towards her at full speed. Laser slid aside, avoiding Stardust's rush, roundhouse hoofing, kicking him backwards. Stardust looked like he was going red, and rushed at her one more time. However, as he got closer, he broke left, and flew behind Laser, slamming a hoof into her back. The force threw her rolling forward on the ground. She wiped her face and smiled. <laughs> nice hit. My turn. Laser threw her back, a uh, flight jacket into the air, and Solstice caught it. I looked back at Laser, but she wasn't there. I heard a loud cracking sound and looked towards it. There was a lot of dust in the air. In the dust, I saw silhouettes of the two Pegasi fighting hoof to hoof back and forth. Eventually, one of them got a nice kick, sending the other out of the dust of cloud. It was Laser Light who was kicked out of the cloud. The dust settled, and Laser Light and Stardust was standing there, a little beat up. Laser Light had did a number on him. He wiped his face and laughed at Laser. <laughs> you thought you could take me on by yourself. How pathetic. Laser struggled to get up, but once she did, she laughed as well. <laughs> you must be joking. I'm having too much fun. Ready for round two, little bird? Stop! Calling me that! Stardust yelled back, flying towards Laser Light once more. Only this time, Stardust didn't try to attack her. He twisted and went for his fallen rifle. I knew all too well how quickly he could kill us if he got a hold of that. I tried to teleport so I could reach the weapon before he did, and forgot about the fucking magic canceling ring on my horn. For a moment, pain shot down my horn, like I picked being hammered into thick rice. Shaking my head, I activated sats and targeted two shots at Stardust's torso. The first one he dodged, still flying towards his rifle. The second he wasn't as lucky with. The blast slammed straight into his side. Unlike when Laser shot him with her own rifle, this time he screamed as the green goo stuck to his armor started to sizzle. He slammed into the ground again and started to roll around trying to get the goo off of his armor. While he was momentarily preoccupied, I looked towards Wind Thrasher. Keep him down. I have to get to his rifle. I'll do my best. She replied as she dashed towards him. I ran towards the fallen rifle as Wind Thrasher flew off to intercept Stardust, who was just getting back to his hooves. A piece of his combat armor had been burned away, revealing a small burn spot underneath it. I saw where I was going, and he tried to come after me. But Wind Thrasher didn't let him. She cut him off and screamed, he dove to the side to avoid the blast, but it still slowed him down. I smiled to myself, thinking, some perfect soldier. I reached his rifle and took hold of it with my magic. Let's see how you, well you do against us without this. Some pony slammed me into the ground a mere moment later, making me lose the hold the hat on his rifle. 
Then a hoof slammed my face into the ground before I heard Stardust say, That's mine, bitch! He got off and picked up the rifle, aiming it right at me with a grin on his face. Then Cutter came in, kicking the rifle right as it fired. He twisted around and tried to kick Stardust in the face, but he jumped back, dodged a counterattack, then slammed the stock of his rifle into Cutter's face. I was back in my hooves with my plasma rifle ready to fire again. Stardust, stop this! Don't make me hurt you again! He glared at me, then lifted his rifle again and fired. I felt Laser's hooves take hold of me and pull me to one side as the rifle fired. The bullet still hit me, but it slammed into the well-armored part of my chest instead of hitting me in the head. It still hurt, but not as bad as you'd think. I'll have to thank Wingnut when I see him again for upgrading his armor. You okay, Shadow? Laser said, examining my body, with her flight jacket back on her. I can see how badly damaged Laser was from the scuffle with Stardust. Yet, she was more concerned about me than herself. Yeah, I'm fine, Laser. I'm more concerned about you. She scoffed. You think you can take down an old mare like myself that easily? No, I guess not. Did you forget about me, ladies? Stardust pushed the bolt back into place as he reloaded his rifle and aimed it back at me again. Once again, he had to dodge an attack from Doorstop who came flying down at him from above. He twisted his rifle around and tried to slam the stock into Doorstop's face. The old pony was tougher than he looked. He let the blow hit him. He took the hit, which barely phased him, then let his wing come up and around and strike Stardust in the throat. Stardust gagged, falling back again, trying to land another strike on Doorstop. But he jumped out of the way, laughing. Ha ha ha! I haven't shown you all my tricks yet, cadet! Stardust coughed. And I haven't shown you all of mine, <coughs> traitor! He dropped something metallic and jumped back right as the flash bomb went off. Doorstop cursed and looked away from the bright exploding light. The light was so bright that it even blinded me through my eyelids as I closed my eyes and turned away from the flash. Once I was able to see again, I saw Stardust was now on Doorstop's back, holding him in a headlock and choking him. And Laser was no longer next to me. I couldn't see all that well, but I had to do something. Hold on, I got this. I took aim with my plasma rifle and was about to fire when Solstice came diving towards him. As she got closer in her dive, she turned her body so her hind hooves were aimed towards the ground. Then, with an almighty stomp, she came down on Stardust's wings so hard that I heard the snaps from where I was standing. He screamed and let go of Doorstop, immediately before grabbing his now broken wings from, with his forehooves. He lost his balance on Doorstop's back as he leaned forward to brace himself to breathe, and dropped his rifle. He reacted quickly and went to grab for it, before being kicked in the face by Solstice. Not so tough without your guns, are ya? She said as she picked it up and tossed it to Laser. He held his face and spat out a mouthful of blood. I'll never get a pretty mare friend if you guys keep going after my face like that. I'll end up being a total fuggo like you. With that, he bucked upwards and hit her in the chest, throwing her back. As he got back to his hooves, he pulled out a beat-up pistol and fired in her direction. Luckily, the bullet only went through her ear instead of her head. And as blood started running down the left half of her face, she said, Nice one, crack shot. What are you, like eight? No, nine feet away? He fired again, and then grazed her shoulder. Oh, I forgot about this. Doorstop said you aren't so good at shooting pistols, especially when prompted with adrenaline like you are right now. Just give up already, bro. You're outnumbered, your wings are broken, and the only gun you have on you looks like it's lived through three wars, not just one. Right as she was done talking, Stardust took his right forehoof, and kicked sand into her eyes and fired again as he ran towards the giant rock. I got a good look of his gun, well, as well as I could see it, when he took cover behind the rock. I saw it was one that I'd given him when he went to Stables 9. He started shooting at the others, but for some reason completely forgot about me. Windthrasher tried flying over to get it behind him, but just as she was airborne, he managed to shoot her in the wing. She dropped back down behind cover and collapsed, brick house, and I tried screaming again to no avail. Meanwhile, Solstice, Laser, Cutter, and the two Pegasi he brought with him returned fire. And that was when I noticed Doorstop was nowhere to be found. 
I looked around, but I couldn't find him anywhere. It was like he suddenly disappeared. Then a bullet whizzed by my head as I was lost in thought, and I realized that I wasn't behind cover by any means. Thinking fast, I ran behind a concrete barrier. I went to grab Stardust's stole rifle off my back, but I didn't feel anything there. Oh, fuck. Shit, there goes my plan of possibly getting a crippling shot. Wait a sec. Laser had his other rifle. Hey, Laser! Toss me his other rifle, I have an idea. Laser examined it quickly and said, Looks like it's out of ammo, and you don't have the kind of ammunition it needs. But don't worry, we've got a plan. She replied. Damn it. Plans never pan out the way they're logically supposed to when it comes down to me and my friends. So whatever happens next can't be good. It was then that I finally saw Doorstop. He was directly behind Stardust. Shit. I have to do something. Grabbing him from behind won't work. He'll just find a way to fight back and get free. Then before I could think of something to do, Doorstop grabbed Stardust under his shoulders with both of his forehooves and stood him upright on his hind legs. After getting him up, Doorstop put his hind hooves around Stardust to hold him where they stood. You forgot rule number one, cadet. Always keep an eye on your enemy and pay attention to your surroundings. Come on now, drop the gun. Stardust didn't listen. Instead, he pointed the gun as best he could toward Doorstop's face and fired. Doorstop barely flinched as the gun went off three times. All he did was blink and wince in pain as the damage of the sound must have caused to his ears. I decided to come out of cover and approach him, which was probably a stupid choice considering he still had a gun readily available and wanted to kill me, and I saw still very much wanted to end him. But I have to try not to worry my friends. As I walked towards him, he fired one shot that hit me in the forehoof. I didn't even flinch. Where'd you get that gun? The one you just shot me with? Why would I tell you? He said around the bit of the pistol. Because I'm curious as to why all the other weapons I've seen you with are in pristine condition, while that one is a pathetic excuse for scrap metal. I replied as I stopped about five feet in front of him. He went to fire again and the gun clicked. He dropped it and smirked. Lucky as ever, courier. Just one thing after another with you, getting lucky. Do you have a collection of luck charms in those saddlebags, or is it just you? All this time I've wondered how no one has managed to kill a simple stable dweller like you. It'd be easy if you weren't so damn lucky, like setting a ghoul on fire or drowning a foal in a radioactive river. You still haven't answered my question, you sick son of a bitch. Where'd you get the pistol? I asked, pressing him and ignoring his attempts to make me angry. How do you know if my mother's a bitch or not? You haven't met her. I sure as hell haven't because she's dead. Just like your feather-brained friend in the kingdom. He replied arrogantly. Great. Not only does he keep going around my question, but he's trying to fuck with me by asking me questions that piss me off. She... Doorstop interrupted. You ain't as good as a shot as you think. The griffin ain't dead. <laughs> of course she's dead. I hit her in the heart. He retorted. Wait, did Doorstop just say that Aura's okay? No. I heard them call the time of death. He probably is just trying to antagonize Stardust. Yeah. That's it, right? Doorstop, if you're trying to fuck with his mind, please don't use the Aura's alive scenario. It's not helping my sense of reason when it comes to my urge to behead him. You leveled at almost 800 foot tower because you thought he killed her and wanted revenge? Do you really think I'd risk pissing you off right now with something like that? He asked as Stardust began to struggle a bit. If you want to know more, talk to Laser or Wind Thrasher. Also, would you help me restrain him already and stop playing 20 questions? If he really is lying about Aura, I'm gonna cut him in half with my sword. Fine. Whatever. I need him to answer the question. I focused my attention on Stardust and got closer as we spoke. Where did you get that gun? 
I took it from an orphan colt I killed in Whitetail Wood. He replied. Finally, I walked up to him and grabbed the front of his armor and pulled him closer to my face. Tell me the truth. You know damn well that's not where you got it. I can't, he replied a bit quietly. I raised an eyebrow. Oh? Really now, why's that? I just can't answer. Why can't you answer such a simple question, Stardust? I asked again, taunting him. Because I don't know, okay? I don't know. All I know is that thinking about it gives me a fucking headache. He said, finally answering. I smirked like a smug little bitch. Now is that so hard? If you want, I could kill you and put you out of your misery. Or I can just tell you where you got that particular pistol. He didn't answer for a minute as he sat there, still lost in thought with a blank expression. Tell me. I so badly wanted him to tell me to kill him, and for the first time in a while I felt the presence of Aquila deep down. Stable 9. Do you recall what happened to it? <laughs> yeah. How can I forget? You blasted the side of a mountain into oblivion by setting off the stable's emergency self-destruct. That's how we ended up finding you at FNF Tools. He replied. They really went to extremes with his memory manipulation. There's one detail you... don't have quite correct with that. You were there with me, right before I did it. You were beaten half to death by a psycho fiend by the name of Gator. Aura was flying you to safety with the Steel Ranger bunker when I set off the bomb. Before I blew it up, though, you were inside the stable with me, and eventually Aura. I was the one who gave you that pistol, because the Steel Rangers confiscated your rifle and left you with nothing, because they didn't think they could trust you. They gave me that shitty pistol when we left, and I gave it to you so you could have something when we went in. You told me you hated pistols, and you asked why you couldn't use the shotgun. I told you because I wanted it. Because I really liked it. He thought about it for a second. Heh, <laughs> what a load. I've never been to Stable 9. I smirked again. Really? Is that why, when everything started going to shit inside the stable, you told me that I should have knocked on wood? The fuck are you getting at here? He asked. I'm just trying to get you to realize that your head's been messed with by the enclave you seem to love so much. The funny thing is that, to them, you're just a lab rat. I actually have proof. You want to hear it? I said as I pulled up the recording of Dr. Stormy on my pit buck. Nothing's going to change the fact that you killed Hailstorm, but fine. Show me your proof. I played the recording and watched his face as he listened to it. His expression went from arrogant to condescending, to lost, and confused. All you ever were to them was an experiment, a tool to make them stronger, and a catalyst for the eventual enclave takeover of the entire equestrian wasteland, like they've always done here in St. Parish. After you got powerful enough for them to clone, you probably would have lived out your rest of your days in the laboratory. Maybe. I was nothing to them but that. But you still killed my best friend. I'm going to make you pay for that. He retorted. Before I could speak, Doorstop did. They really popped your kernels, didn't they, cadet? Don't you remember? Hailstorm got crushed by the stable door when you escaped from the stable, and his insides squeezed out of him, like a tube of toothpaste getting stepped on. Damn near tore me to shreds knowing what happened to him. He wasn't just a good cadet, but also a good buck. With a lot of ambition. No. It was her that killed him. I remember it. It's so... It's so... Fuzzy. I sighed. Stardust. You and a bunny pony should know that I only kill the ponies that deserve it. Like Dr. Cell. You remember him? Do you remember what he made Windthrasher do to those poor stable residents that were trying to escape? He started shaking his head back and forth. Ugh, just stop! All these questions are over the place. It's making my head hurt. I know what you're trying to do. 
You're trying to confuse me so that I'll join you in your murder and mayhem. I won't fall for your tricks. Fine. Have it your way, then. What's gonna happen now is I'm going to restrain you, bring you back to Stable 97, and make you remember. It'd be a lot easier if you trusted us enough to show you the truth. But your two goddesses damn stubborn. That's the thing about us stable ponies, though, isn't it? We're stubborn. I guess that's why we used to be such good friends. We knew what it was like to be forced into a different way of life that we didn't much like. But we had to deal with it anyway because neither of us could go back to the safety of our homes. Think about it, Stardust. My name is Pride, he interrupted. Sure, whatever. Pride, then. Think about it. When was the last time you were in Stable 97? When did you run away from your home? I asked as Laser came and helped Doorstop restrain him. A few weeks ago, if you want to know so badly, he answered quickly. I actually wanted to laugh in his face after he said that. Try more like seven months ago. One more question. Why did you leave? He stammered at that. I don't know. All right, I'm done with him. Let's get into this tale before he decides he doesn't care that his brain is just a jumble of bad play scripts and wants to kill all of his friends. Laser snapped that same kind of collar that I was wearing earlier around his neck and put him in hoof cuffs. Vinna, do your thing. Vinna beeped excitedly and floated in front of Stardust and did his weird flash thing in his face. Suddenly, Stardust looked like he was stoned and said, Ugh. Do you guys see that floating tentacle monster? It totally just warped in here from the fifth dimension to put a hex on me. Everything feels... woozy. Where's my pet caterpillar, Steve? Is he a butterfly yet? If I missed it... He proceeded to cry about some non-existent pet of his as we started to regroup around him. <laughs> I miss Steve. I sighed and leaned back over to look, look, look at the others. I can't believe that worked. Doorstop chuckled. Of course it worked. We made a plan and followed through with it. I knew we could do it as long as we worked together. The Enclave thinks uh, Stardust is a perfect soldier. But as long as you know how he fights, he's not that tough. So, what now? Are we taking you back to the kingdom until we can figure out how to get into Stable 97? Windthrasher walked over to me. No. We're heading straight to Stable 97. I frowned. I thought the stranger said I had to go back to the kingdom. Solstice laughed. He said that because you were acting like a crazy bitch. But he figured if you calmed down because of your friends, there was no real need. I frowned. I'm really starting to hate that asshole. Fine. Let's get going. So, it turns out that using a robot to scramble the signals going through some pony's brain to make them easier to transport wasn't such a good idea. The past hour we've been traveling, all Stardust has been wanting to do is whine about a stupid fake pet. It got so annoying that I was about to hit him. But before I could make contact with my hoof, Laser stopped me. I know him acting like an idiot's annoying, but if you don't send some kind of shock to his brain, he can come back to his senses. He might not seem like a threat all chained up and loopy like that, but you need to remember that he's highly trained and can probably get out of that stuff pretty easily and kill us. Oh, come on! Can't we, like, duct tape his mouth shut or something? I just can't stand his constant whining about something that doesn't even exist. Stardust turned his head towards me with a bit of a drunken sway as he said, He is too real, okay? So shut up and keep helping me look. You're very nice to help me, by the way. Holy fucking Celestia, this is so stupid. Why couldn't they just let me kill him instead of letting me get tortured like this? Solstice, is there anything you can do to shut him up? You seem to have a wild imagination. <laughs> and that's a crack by the time you duct tape me to that moron in Halo 1, I swear to the goddesses. I'm gonna make sure he does something ten times worse than talks too much. Solstice replied snarkily. It's kinda odd, but also uncanny. She reminds me a lot of what Stardust was like around the time I met him. He used to be so quick with sarcasm and snappy comebacks, and after a while, got a lot more serious. 
Maybe it was a situation I kept putting all of them in. I sighed. It wasn't a crack about anything, but now that you mention it, you did have it coming for how you've treated me and my friends. I know you're helping us right now, or at least somewhat are, but I still don't trust you. If I could go back to that moment, I'd do the same thing. It was funny. Things went back and forth like this during the time we continued our journey. After a little while, though, we all stopped talking. It was just Laser and a robot, Solstice, Doorstop, Wind Thresher, and myself transporting Stardust to Stable 97. Cutter and the other two Pegasi went with him back to the kingdom after we left. I wish he would have come with us. We need the help. And he might actually be in a talking mood. All this silence apart from Stardust's constant yammering is getting really boring. Not to mention quite depressing. Suddenly, Laser grabbed Stardust's mouth to shut him up and said, Everyone be quiet. What? Doorstop asked. Can't you hear it? Something's close. A lot of somethings, too. Laser whispered. Windthresher perked up her ears. I can hear it. It sounds like a horde of ghouls. It also sounds like they're attacking something. No. Wait. Getting attacked. It sounds like it's happening on the other side of that hill. When she said that, I broke away from the group and climbed the short distance to the top of the hill. I peered over the top to see that she was right. What I saw, I wasn't expecting. It was actually pretty badass. I saw a unicorn stallion in a white coat and a black mane, wearing a white t-shirt and a leather jacket, swinging a bat wrapped in barbed wire. Each time he swung, he bashed in or completely knocked off the heads of the ghouls coming at him. His yellow eyes moved around quickly as he kept swinging, as if he was keeping a constant eye on his surroundings. I looked down the hill and at the others and said quietly, You guys have to see this, it's fucking awesome! Laser gave me a confused look as she continued to hold Stardust's mouth. If at some point you're getting mauled by these ghouls, then you need some serious help. No, I promise it's not something like that. Come on. I retorted, waiting for them to come see. Laser stayed at the bottom of the hill with Stardust as the others came up to look at the one stallion army, killing every ghoul that came to him. Immediately, Windthresher looked concerned. Shouldn't we help him? He could get exhausted and overwhelmed by them. Come on, Windthrasher. He's practically a wall of dead ghouls surrounding him. If anything, it'll get high enough to keep them away from him for a longer period of time. Yeah, it's not like he's screaming for help or anything. Solza added in agreement. I looked over to say something to Doorstop about the situation, but he was gone. It seemed like he didn't want to miss out on the fun and went to help the stallion. Of course, he went to go help him. The only entertaining thing I've seen in the past 24 hours, and at some point he had to ruin it. I'm gonna go help too, Windthrasher said as she got up and took to the air. Yeah, you go do that, I sighed. I guess I'll help too, even though I really don't want to. I pulled out the revolver I found in Mill City Tower and crossed the apex of the hill and ran down towards the large mass of rotting irradiated flesh. I started unloading the cylinder. When I stopped to reload, some of them broke away from the group and came in my direction. Right as one was about to jump on me, Solstice blew its head off and covered me as I finished reloading. Soon we were all in the thick of it, and practically covered in ghoul ichor and pieces of scattered bone that flew off from the strange stallion's bat. For some reason, all this slaughter was making me feel sort of better. I think it was because I was able to sensibly kill living things without having the guilt of killing some pony. Soon, I got so into it that I was dual-wielding Dreamwalker and the revolver, shooting almost anything that moved. I actually almost shot Solstice out of reflex once or twice, and for some reason Windthresher too, for that matter. I was just about to shoot the last ghoul running towards me when the stallion came up to help hit a home run on the back of its head, spraying ichor, bone, and brain meat right in my face, making my pit buck click quite a bit. I took my hoof and wiped the mess off my face and spit out the bit of it that got in my mouth. The stallion held the bat over his right shoulder and gave me a fascinated wide-eyed look of astonishment. Holy shit! Now that is just gross. I've had worse, I said nonchalantly. Technically, I was telling the truth. There is a certain dumpster memory lingering in the back of my mind that I still gag at. You're pretty fucked up, then. I like it. 
My sons used to hate this kind of thing when they were young, but after years of telling them, Buck up, buttercup, they turned out to be what you'd expect, he said, through the creepiest yet charming smile I've ever seen. The name's Hex. What brings you to these parts? Uh, my name's Shadowstar. I'm just passing through this, um, field to help one of my friends. Why are you here? I replied, feeling a bit uneasy about the creepy mix of Cracker Jack and Gator vibes I was getting from this guy. He closed his eyes and smiled again. Mmm, Shadow. Such a nice name. I'm here to kill these ghouls and other various monsters, along with things of legend that go bump in the night. I also heard the mysterious stranger's been seen around here. I want his gun. Why the fuck would you need his gun for? Solstice asked before I could say anything. Couldn't you just, like, get your own revolver to kill things? Hex began to laugh like she'd done something hysterical and hit his bat on the ground a couple of times. <laughs> you banned moronic shitbags with no idea what that particular revolver can do, can you? I heard Doorstop grumble beside me. If we knew what the fuck that thing did, we wouldn't be asking, would we? Now answer the question for her before I get do something you'll regret. Hex just laughed again. I'll regret. Ooh, so big, so scary, and threatening. The fuck are you, or daddy or something? Because I gotta say, jumping in like that really grounds my gears a bit. I can tell she can stick up for herself just by the way she copped an attitude with me. Doorstop came within inches of his face and said, What the fuck is so damn funny? You look like a clown to you? Did I crack a joke? I used to be a drill instructor. And you remind me of a little shit stain that used to be laughing in my face. Called him Private Joker. He laughed himself into the ground eventually. And it was no accident. So laugh again. I dare ya. She's nothing but an unbranded dashite. She's traveling with us and I don't appreciate greaseballs like you disrespecting mares like it ain't no big deal. Now either you answer the question, or I'll stick that bat so far up your ass you'll taste wood and remnants of your own shit. Solstice actually looked a bit flustered and embarrassed after the small, um, I wouldn't call it a fight, more like an emotional debate. You okay, Solstice? I asked. She nodded. Yeah, just never had any with my dad, never jump into something like that. Hex sighed and breathed. Uh, the stranger's gun is special in a way. It's got a gift. Whatever it shoots... It kills, no matter what the fuck it is. If I had that magnificently crafted piece of iron in my belt, I'd be the greatest hunter in these here wastes. Huh? He must hunt paranormal or supernatural things like squirrel and mouse. That would explain why he wants a gun that can kill anything. The question is, though, is he sane enough to handle a weapon like that? We need to ditch this guy, fast. He's making me all kind of nervous. Well, we should get going. Gotta be somewhere soon. Oh, no you don't. Something about you seems a bit fishy. He said as he pulled out a large knife with his magic and rubbed the side of it across my cheek. Interesting. Very interesting. Sit down and hold your four hooves out in front of you. In the corner of my eye, I could see that Solstice and Doorstop had their guns trained on him, but Windthrasher was nowhere to be seen. Put that knife away, and I'll do whatever you say. He smiled his creepy smile. No, no, no. This is for my own protection. Don't worry, I won't do anything that results in you losing your hooves unless I'm provoked. I did as he said and watched as he closely examined my hooves as I held them out. What are you doing? Just checking something is all. He replied as he took out a small container and splashed water on my face. Huh. You're a whole heap of strange, aren't you? Believe it or not, this isn't the first time I've experienced this. I replied. He smiled again. Is that so? I guess you'll have to tell me about it some other time, and there will be some other time. You still have to leave, don't you? I stammered a bit inside my head. Uh, yeah. I just gotta grab my other friends from over the hill. 
Ah, I see. All right then, I guess I'll be seeing ya, Shadow. He said as he turned and walked away. When he turned, I saw his cutie mark. It was an oddly shaped knife with strange symbols on it in front of a magic circle. Solstice, Doorstop, and I returned to Laser, who was with Wind Thrasher, talking as Stardust got hit with another wavelength of Vina. What's going on, Laser? I asked. She sighed. I was actually going to say this earlier, but I'm afraid I can't go all the way to Stable 97 with you. This is as far as I go, and Vina's treatment should last long enough to get Stardust in there without causing any problems. Solstice gave her an accusing look. What? Too scared to go into the thick of it or something? I couldn't help but notice you stayed back here while it was safe with the robot and the tweaked out freak. The only thing that scares me is the Enclave, you stuck up bitch. If they discover that I'm alive, it'll put my family in risk. Besides, I was going to risk leaving an impaired pony alone. Who knows what would have happened? If you haven't been paying attention to the situation, we have one of the Enclave's strongest soldiers in our custody, and they haven't made a single move. Doesn't that raise a slight suspicion? Laser retorted. Tulsa scoffed. Shadow's going, and she probably is more of a risk than you. So I don't see what the problem is. Before Laser could say anything else, Doorstop stepped in. Just let it go. She has her priorities, and we have ours. Don't cause any bad blood between our allies. It only leads to your own demise in the long run. She just glared at him as he stood there. Whatever. Let the bitch go. It'll be easy to infiltrate the place with fewer ponies. That robot might be a problem anyway. She said as she turned and walked a few feet away with her back turned to Laser. I looked at Laser and asked, How long should the thing with your robot last? It won't last for any more than 23 or 24 hours, she replied. However, it should be long enough for you to fix him. Stardust stepped in front of her. Oh, officer, I'm fine. I can still fly unimpaired. I pushed him away. Shut up, she wasn't talking to you. Hey, that's mean. He replied before going over to Bug Solstice, who continued to tell him to stop touching her. I looked up at the sky, who was... and was surprised that none other sins of the Enclave showed up this time to get Stardust captured. Liz was right. It was very suspicious. Something was also rubbing me the wrong way. I was sure at least Envy would have tried to kill me again, even without having Stardust with me. It's all too quiet, too calm, too easy. So, are you going back to the kingdom? Windthrasher asked. I'll be there, yes. But it won't be for much longer. I need to return to Nexus after I've finished up the few things here. This area is covered with Enclave, and I'm beginning to become a risk to all of you the longer I stay in the area. I can't stay here any longer. Laser replied sincerely. Wind Thrasher was going to say something, but I interrupted. If we don't make it through this, and you haven't left yet, tell Wing that I'm sorry we couldn't save Stardust. She frowned. I'll tell him no such thing. You'll make it through this in one piece, and come back to those waiting for you. Those waiting for me? I asked curiously. The only one there is Wingnut right now. And Cutter, I guess, but he's more of an acquaintance than anything. She sighed in annoyance. Don't you remember earlier? Aura is waiting for you too. Don't fuck with me, I saw her die, and so did Wind Thrasher, I snapped. Yes, you did. But you ran off before Sheena did what she did. What exactly did she do? Aura was dead, I asked. She took a deep breath. When you ran off, Sheena got into an argument with one of the physicians while performing CPR on Aura. What ended up happening was that Sheena used her position as Empress to make the doctors put Aura on bypass, which is a machine that acts as a heart for the patient for a short time to keep them alive. After some exploratory surgery, they found out that she was shot. One of the bullets clipped a bone, and that piece uh, clipped off her heart. It pierced and lodged itself there. When you were talking to her in the room while she slept, it moved and she crashed. They ended up removing the piece of bone and took her off bypass to restart her heart after surgery. She should be just fine, but we'll have a bit of recovering to do. 
There's only so much a healing potion can do after all. All that and a toilet, Stardust said after she finished. So, she's not dead? I would have murdered Stardust for nothing but empty revenge? I asked, a little dumbfounded by the whole thing. She nodded. That's exactly what I said. Great. So I destroyed a historic regional monument for nothing. Now I'm at least 10 to 20% more ashamed of myself than usual. And hate myself just a bit more for trying to kill my best friend. Okay. I guess some of my enemies are right. I am a monster. Anyway, we're wasting time standing here talking. Tell both Aura and Wingnut we'll be back as soon as we can. I'll tell them for you. And stay safe. You don't know what to expect in there, and honestly, Doorstop doesn't either, even though he's been in there more recently than anybody else. She said. You said he's got a contact inside the stable that can get us in and possibly help us to get the memory machine. I retorted. She turned and started to walk away, unfolding her wings from her flight jacket. That may be true, but as you know, the Enclave has played similar tricks before. Be careful. So, if I don't see you back in the kingdom, I'll see you again. I know it. She winked and gave me a toothy smile, similar to Windthrasher's smile. Vina following close behind her as she flew off. As she started to fly away, the reality of what she said hit me, and I almost started to cry again. She's alive. I didn't lose her. Windthrasher came over to me and wrapped a wing around me. Yes, she is. She's waiting for you back at the kingdom. She would have come with, but she needs her rest right now. She gave me a message in case we found you, though. What? I sniffed, as I said. She said, You better make it back here in one piece or you'll regret it, shrimp. Her words, not mine. I laughed weakly. That sounds like her. Is she mad at me? Windthrasher winced a little. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell when he left. He gave her a look. Come on. Really? She sighed. Fine. She's mad, yes. But not for what you did or anything like that. She's mad that you ran off again. She said it's becoming a bad habit. And that's very true. I said. And something came to mind. Why did it seem like you were ready for Stardust? Like I said before, it was a trap. The stranger came to the kingdom after he found you. He said that he couldn't get you out of the city in time. And he knew Stardust would come looking for you. He helped us to come up with a way to take him down and capture him. He said Stardust would come after you as soon as you were out of the city, and he did. But he told me he was going to take care of Stardust. I said, confused. Well, in a way, he did. He set up the trap. He couldn't tell you because we had no idea where your mind was at. At first, he didn't want to let you go. He said you couldn't be trusted. But thanks to Wingnut, he relented in the end. I frowned. So he used me as bait to capture Stardust? She nodded. That's about right. I smiled and got back to my hooves. Not a bad plan. Even if it does piss me off to no end. Come on. Let's fix our friend. The sooner we do, the better. And the sooner we can see Aura. Together, we started to walk and head towards Stable 97. I couldn't keep the smile off my face as we walked. Aura was alive. Hurt, but alive. When we go back to the kingdom, I was going to make sure she knew how I feel. Nothing was going to get between me and her ever again. Not the Enclave. Not my mother. Hell, death itself won't keep me from her again. With Laser and Vina gone, it was just me, Solstice, Doorstop, Wind Thrasher, and Stardust on our way to Stable 97. I checked my Pipbuck map, and it looked like we still had quite a ways to go. And what's worse is that we'd have to go through Annapolis, and across the river, where it goes through the city, just past Saint's Parish Wall. We were at the Winnapolis city limits, close to where we'd been not that long ago. The sign also said Murderopolis on it, like the other one did. There was something else painted on the sign that looked like a crudely painted zebra head wearing a purple bandana. There was writing under the zebra head that read, No trespassing. This is territory of the tribal lords. Violators will be shot. Survivors will be shot again. If you're still alive after that, we'll gladly torture you. I face hoofed. 
At least it's more descriptive than the last city limit sign we read. What do you mean? Quinn Thresher asked. When I was here before, I saw a similar sign. But it didn't have a gang warning on it. I think this is a sign to be more careful than usual in this area of the city. Considering there's a literal warning that mentions the gang by name. The only weird thing is it looks like the gang itself are the ones who wrote this warning. If they're into murder and mayhem, then why are they warning ponies away? I replied. Solstice scoffed, which is becoming, or already is, a bad habit of hers. You guys are such dumbasses. They put the warning there to pretty much challenge anyone who sees the sign to come into their territory to either attack them directly or try to sneak through undetected, which is possible, but probably hard because street gangs aren't like most factions. You see that purple bandana there on the zebra's head? Yeah, when Thresher and I say in unison. Okay, I think of it like a color code. The other gangs around here, but I'm 90% sure that that's the tribal lords, are the biggest ones, and their color is purple. There are other zebras around the city, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're affiliated with the gang. They could just be raiders, or ordinary citizens, I guess. If you see the zebra wearing any kind of purple on them, they're most likely a member of the tribal lords. And from what I hear, gangs of Monopolis don't take well to ponies. She explained. I scratched my head. Yeah, that's interesting and all, but I'm literally the only non-flyer here. Couldn't one of you carry me over the city so we could avoid all this bullshit and, you know, get there faster? She grabbed the spot in between her eyes, just above her nose, with a hoof. I knew you were dense, but not this dense. We have a prisoner who is with us chained and can't fly and if we get spotted with the enclave sky patrol carrying him or just spotted by them in general we're in for more shit than a few gangsters she's right the doorstop agreed it would be much easier to go through the city even though it is slower and has the potential for gang violence fuck my life i said dropping my head in a dramatic despair entering the city did present much immediate problems but I did see some kind of movement from behind the collapsed building that concerned me. It reminded me of the short firefight Khalid had when I was with him. Wind Thrasher was keeping up alert above us, a few feet in the air, but I didn't think she could hear them, even with her advanced hearing. It's quiet. I don't like it, Doorstop said. Keep your guard up, no matter what, and make sure you don't lose Cadet Solstice. Remember... Right now, he's like a child with an overactive imagination and sticky hooves. Make sure he doesn't try to play with something, some inactive landmine, like it's a flying saucer. <laughs> it's not like he's that hard to keep an eye on. At least he's gone quiet for now. All he's doing is blankly staring at random stuff like he's never seen it before. She said snarkily. Doorstop huffed. Exactly my point. Right now, he's overly curious about everything. Curiosity will get any pony killed eventually. She turned her head away from him and stuck her tongue out in mockery. Why do I have to be the one to watch him, though? Batty or I, Gilded Hero, could do it just as well as I could. We need Wind Thrasher to stay up there and listen for any pony approaching dangers. And Shadow has been through the city last, at least part way, before, and she has a map. You on the other hoof don't have good hearing because it's selective, and also don't have a map. You also have a certain obligation to keep an eye on him when we travel. Dorstop explained. I can't do it because I don't want to. And I'm technically your superior at the moment, so I can order you around whenever I feel... She gave them one of her patented snooty looks. You know, we're not in the Enclave anymore. And I would be your superior if we were, right? He smiled. I meant with the group. I have some seniority over you because I've been with them longer than you have, and I've also been a lot nicer to you than them. Besides, some degrading names here and there. That's the stupidest reason I've ever heard of. Besides, I don't think I can be nice to them. At least not the courier, she said arrogantly. Why is that? he asked. I'm still pissed about her. At the times, she made me look like an idiot in front of my superiors when I was still in the Enclave. She replied, Get over it. You're not a teenager anymore. Gah. Yes, I am. I'm just a fucking prodigy and went up through the ranks quickly after graduating early. She retorted. He 
He kind of gave her an awkward smirk that he should have known that. Right. Right. How old are you now, anyway? It's pretty rude to ask a mare her age, you know. She replied. If you would have to know. Probably a year or two younger than Stardust. I turned and looked at her. You're older than me? I don't even know how old you are. So I don't know if I'm older than you. She said in a bitchy tone. Eh, <sighs> whatever. Not like I care anyway. I said just as bitchily. I don't hate her or anything, but I do really dislike her. I hope she gets easier to be around in the future. I can't deal with some pony who's always on the edge, or has some stupid personal vendetta against me for one of my stupid tactical pranks. Yeah, that's right. I gave what I did to her name, because it was very much a tactical prank. Like I said before, she had it coming, after how she treated me and the others each time we met. Now that I think about it, we didn't really see her any other time than at Frosty Summit, and it was only me at the Halo 1 when I decided to taper that stallion mid-coitus. Kind of wanted to turn on the radio, but I knew that'd definitely draw attention to us, and cause more trouble than I want to deal with. I feel like all we have to do is walk and kill and walk and kill. There was one time when we had fun, but it didn't last long when Ori Callis showed up outside of the Applewood and started making threats. The weird part now is he's living like my shadow or something, like some kind of parasite. I just wish all this bullshit could be over with and I could settle down somewhere and live like a normal wastelander's life with my friends. What are you thinking so hard about? You're a bit quiet and it's making me paranoid. Especially after what happened last time you were in the city. Stolsa said from behind me. I'm not thinking about anything much. Just how much I hate the city. Why do you care anyway? It's not like we're friends or anything. I don't even know why you're helping us. I replied. She scoffed. <laughs> I don't really care. I'm trying to make conversation to pass the time faster. Could you have noticed this place is a fucking boring and is killing what remains of my happiness? Also, maybe if you weren't such a crazed lunatic, you'd make friends easier. The only friends you have right now are just as fucked in the head as you are. Except Doorstop, he's cool. And I'm helping you because I hate the Enclave for what they did to me and my family. They need to learn everything that has a chain reaction. Even threats. She's lying, Doorstop said. She's socially awkward and wants real friends. Her eyes went wide. Shh! That's not what I want. Don't go putting things out like that aloud. Aw, I ain't this precious. She's embarrassed that... A random gunshot rang out in front of us. I looked forward again and saw a small group, about five or six zebras. Windthrasher, you're supposed to tell us you heard anything. I couldn't hear him, I swear, she retorted. One of the zebras stepped forward, but another zebra who had his gun aimed at one of us. Couldn't tell exactly who, though. The fuck are y'all doing around here? Didn't you see the sign? Normally, I'd put a cap right here and be done with it, but I'm curious as to why y'all have some whacked out pegasus and chains. Ah, oh, great. Now I gotta think of a lie to tell these shitheads so they don't kill us all. Or at least try to kill us. Wait, do I have to lie to them? They most likely hate the Enclave too because they're trying to take the city from him. He's our prisoner. We're taking him somewhere to fix his head after what the Enclave did to him. Right now, he's the current pride of the Seven Sins of Quinity. The only reason we're here right now is because we're on a short time limit, and it's quicker to go through the city than around it. You fucking with me, bitch. There is no way that's pride. He's too skilled to be caught by a tiny little bitch like you. He said as the other zebra twitched the gun a bit, trying to intimidate me. It wasn't just me that caught him. I know from others, including the ones you see with me. There are more, but they stayed back. The reason he's so messed up right now is because another one of my friends has a robot that can use a confusion ray thing to do this to ponies for a certain amount of time. I guess if I can't reason with a low-life gangbanger, I can always try to just shoot him. There may be quite a few of them, but I'm pretty sure we're more skilled than all of them combined. Times maybe about five or ten. Gangbangers are just raiders who dress better and aren't completely insane. That door sounds believable and shit, but I still gotta kill y'all. He said. 
Then the other zebra cocked his gun. Wait, I said quickly. The Enclave's trying to run you out of your turf, right? He raised an eyebrow. Yeah, so what? Well, if you let me pass, then I'll deal a lot more damage to the Enclave than you will if you kill us. Think about it. If I'm allowed passage, you'll most likely be able to stay here in the city and do whatever the fuck you want without having to worry about being killed or driven out. I replied, trying not to waste as much bullets as possible on pricks like him. He frowned and glared at me. Y'all think I give a shit about those fucking feather-brained morons? Nah, I care about the motherfuckers who think they own this city. I'm talking about the other gangs and raiders that pollute this city. I rolled my eyes. That's not my problem. I can take care of your enclave problem. What the rest of you fucked up zebras do to each other is none of my business. I turned back to my friends. Let's go. We don't have time to deal with these idiots. Um, Shadow, I don't think you should be calling the zebras with guns idiots. Windthrasher said. Y'all should listen to the... Ugh, what the fuck is that thing? I really don't want to do this right now. Honestly, I want to get this whole thing over with. Pulling out my plasma rifle, I pointed right at the leader. The other zebras around him all pointed their guns at me, but no one fired. I smiled. That's my friend. Her name's Windthrasher. She's a sweet mare, but she could also fuck you up. If I were you, I'd apologize and be a little nicer. Just because she looks different doesn't mean you have to be a fucking rude. Windthrasher landed next to me. Um, Shadow, it's no big deal. Please don't get a shot because I look different. My grin widened. We're in a hurry. You're in my way. I kill things that are in my way. Zebra turned and walked away. Cap these fools. Before they could get a shot off, I said, And where do you think you're going? The zebra turned around and looked back at me. Why you asking? I pointed a hoof at where Mill City Tower used to dominate the sky. I'm sure you saw that blast that took down the tower, right? Yeah, so what? He asked. That was me. Now, let me pass before I do the same shit to you. He glared at me for a long moment, then turned again. Cap him. Well, I tried, I said. Before they could open fire, I entered Sats. I targeted two of the zebras and opened fire. As my shots went off, Solstice and Doorstop tried to jump in too, but Windthrasher jumped in front of us all. My two shots only took out the two I fired at, but Windthrasher took care of the rest. She opened her mouth and screamed. The rest of the zebras were blasted off their hooves, their bodies rolling across the ground. The eater slammed into the wall of the building with a satisfying crunch. She stopped her scream and looked back at me, disappointment written on her face. We don't have to kill everyone who gets in our way. Talk about a buzzkill, Solstice said. She glared over at Solstice, then back to me. I mean it. They didn't have to do that. They were going to kill us, I responded. Maybe, but you know you could have handled it without us killing them. I pushed past her and started walking towards the leader. <laughs> Unlike you, Windthrasher, I don't live in a fantasy world where we can just talk our way out of situations like that. The leader zebra looked up at me as I swapped my plasma rifle out for a dreamwalker. The fuck are y'all? I ignored his question. What's the safest way to get through your turf? He winced a little, as if something was hurting him. I ain't telling you shit! I pressed dreamwalker to his head. Tell me or die. I ain't scared of you! You should be, I said. Then Solstice walked over to me and pushed Dreamwalker away. Shadow, you don't need to do that. We can get through here without his help. I pulled Dreamwalker away from her, pointed it back at the zebra leader. If we don't need him, then he can die. We'll need him telling his crew about us. His eyes went wide and he started to shake. Y'all are crazy! I was about to pull the trigger when Windthrasher walked over and gave me a sad look. I would we'll be so disappointed in you right now, Shadow. You don't know what you're talking about. She sighed. If you really want her to love you, then you'll have to put yourself away from this dark path you're on. She'd understand. If you don't believe me, then go ahead and shoot him. 
But if you're wrong, then you'll have to explain to her why you did what you did. Just like you're gonna have to explain to her why you destroyed Mill City Tower. I looked back at the zebra, then lowered Dreamwalker. Fine. But if we get attacked because of this dipshit, then that's on you. After I pulled Dreamwalker away and stepped away from the zebra, his bravery came back. Yeah, that's what I thought, bitch! Windthrasher turned on him and bared her fangs. Her eyes started to glow. I just saved your ass. If you provoke her again, I'm not stopping her. Now tell us the safest way to get through the city. He shrank away in fear from her. Okay, fine, whatever. I'm sick of dealing with y'all punk asses. Head down the main street, go eight blocks, turn down fifth, fall out of town. She backed away and said sweetly, Thank you. Now get your friends out of here before I decide to sample zebra blood. He got up and limped towards the left of his companions. Once they were all up, they took off down the way they came. Once they were gone, I looked over at her. Sorry. Save it. Windthrasher said, walking back to Solstice. Get Stardust and let's keep moving. The sooner we're out of this city, the better. I looked down at Dreamwalker as my friends walked past me, heading down the road the zebra told us about. Am I really that bad? The voice echoed in my head. It was Aquila. You're turning into a monster just like me, Shadow. I'm so proud. I sighed. I was wondering how long it would take you to start talking again. Your mother knew what she was doing with this cage. It's taken me a while to get through some of it just so I could talk to you again. Though, if it wasn't for you, I would have taken a lot longer, so thank you. I looked up at my friends, who were starting to get a little far from me. I started to trot towards them as I said back to Aquila. Why is it thanks to me? She laughed. Easy. I feed off your anger and hatred. You've been giving me plenty over the last few days. Such a generous gift. I stopped in my tracks, my eyes looking back towards Mill City Tower, or where it should be. You mean when I... Yes, when you killed all those pegasi like you did. Then the unicorn doctor and the other one who figured out who you were. That was a great help. All that hatred and rage over a griffin you thought was dead. Then you went and killed two of the council ponies, then blew up the tower. And that was like a feast. So much power in such a short amount of time. Though I wish you hadn't gotten caught. Who knows how much stronger I could have gotten if you were allowed to keep going. She said with an evil snicker. I wonder what you'd do if that brat was killed. You always treat him like a little brother. It's sweet. I wonder if you'd kill if you thought he was dead. Or maybe that mare from the stable you liked. You make it seem like I'm some kind of monster. Shadow. Sweet, crazy shadow. You haven't realized by now, have you? You are a monster, just like me. We are one and the same. I am you, and you're me. We're just different sides of the same coin. A little different on each, but in the end, the same thing. No, I'm nothing like you. You're just something that's created in a lab. She started to laugh. As she did, I could feel her presence slowly fading away. <laughs> Shadow, stop lying to yourself. You know where all this is leading. You've known since the day you first let me into your body. Windthrasher stopped and looked back at me. Shadow, is everything okay? Ignoring her, I asked Aquila. What do you mean when I let you in? Think hard on it, Shadow. Maybe if you let some of your old memories in, you'll understand. I never possessed you or took over your body. We made a deal. And soon, it'll be time to pay up. Stay alive till then, Shadow. Oh, and do enjoy the little time you have left with your friends and the ones you love. When I'm powerful enough to take control and send you deep into the same cage your mother trapped me in, I'm killing them all. She said right before her presence faded away. I felt a hoof start to shake. I looked up to Windthrasher, her slightly glowing eyes, as she said, Shadow, are you okay? I shook myself and took a deep breath. No. I don't think I am, Windthrasher. I'm losing it. I don't think I can stop her anymore. 
She looked at me concerned. You mean Aquila? I nodded and started to shake. All this time, I thought Aura was dead. She was feeding off my anger, my hate. She's getting stronger, and now I don't know how much longer my mother's magic can hold her back. She just spoke to me for the first time in a week. She said soon she'd be able to take over, and then she'd kill all of you. To my shock, she slapped me. Get a hold of yourself, Shadow. I rubbed my face. What was that for? She growled at me. I know you're scared because you think that that thing inside of you is going to take over one day. I understand that better than any pony. But you can't let your fear control you like that. If you do, then you're really doing nothing but giving her the despair that she wants you to have. Makes you weak, Shadow. And that's what she wants. Now step up and stop letting her get to you. But what if... She interrupted me. What if she takes over? They will find a way to save you, just like we're doing with Stardust. Instead of worrying about what may happen in the future, start looking for a way to rid yourself of her for good. She says she's stronger and wants to take over, then fine, let her try. But the Shadow I know is too fucking stubborn to let that happen. Now get off your ass and let's go to Stable 97 to save our friend, and get back to the kingdom. She held me back to my hooves. Looking back at her, I said, How can I face Wingnut Aurora after what I've done? She sighed. You'll have to find a way. First of all, you need to stop acting out when you think something bad happened to you. That's what gets you into these messes in the first place. Or right, Wingnut will understand what you're going through. Why else do you think I'm here? And the rest of the ponies? It's because we all care about you. Well, I'm not sure about Solstice, but you know the rest of us do. You're part of our family, and every pony looks out for each other. I couldn't help laughing. I guess you're kind of like a big sister. A shy one most of the time, but still full of fire when it comes up. Sorry for Auburn acting. Try to do better. She smiled and hugged me. That's all I ask. Trust me, I know what it's like to be a monster. You may think because of what you are or what you did, you're becoming one. But you're not. You're just a filly who has to deal with more than a pony her age should have to. I just wish I knew what to do. I mean, when I get worked up like that, I can't stop myself sometimes. I react without thinking. I've always been like that. How about this? If something bad like that happens again, or you're feeling like you're going to lose control, come find me. I'll always be for you, Shadow. I understand you better than even you do. Can you promise me that? She asked. I nodded. I think I can. Good. Let's get to Stable 97. We have a Pegasus to fix. When that's done, I think you need to finally talk to Aura about how you feel. We started to make our way back to our friends who were waiting for us just on the road. As we walked, I blushed a little and asked Wind Thrasher, What if Aura doesn't like me the way I think she does? What if she turns me down? The Bat Pony laughed lightly. Oh, I don't think you need to worry about that, Shadow. Why's that? She winked at me. Because I can tell she likes you. Why do you think she said so back when we were heading to Trotston? Because you're a hopeless romantic mare? She just laughed again. Maybe so. But I know what I'm talking about. We both laughed as we caught up to the rest and followed the directions we were given through Winnapolis. What I didn't notice was that, thanks to Wind Thrasher, I'd forgotten all about Aquila and her threats. Because that's what true friends do. They help you forget about your worries. They're always there to help you, no matter what. The edge of Annapolis was finally in sight. And our destination was not that far past it. Sadly, it might as well be miles away because this side of Annapolis was blocked by raiders. Not as many as the ones who were used to blocking the roads back in Cartwheel. But they still had enough to keep my friends and me from passing through. We could always just go around them. I said as I looked down the main road that led out of town. In this city, you'll be lucky to find another way that isn't blocked by rubble or gangs. Doorstop said. Raiders ain't that tough. We can take them. Maybe. But what if gunfire brings more raiders or the gangs? Make peace, not war. 
Stardust said with a dreamy smile on his face. Yeah, no. I said, checking my ammo for the plasma rifle. We can't sneak around them, so I say we just go in through them. We should have gone through the damn city. I swear, we wasted more time than going around it would have taken. Solstice said, then jumped and glared over at Stardust. Stop touching me! But your tail's so pretty, he said, reaching out to touch her tail again. Do that again, and I'll rip your fucking nads off and feed them to you, along with your stupidly imaginary bug. He got a pouty face. What does Steve ever do to you? He's my best friend. She rolled her eyes. I think I liked him better when he was trying to kill us. Sardis gasped. I would never try to hurt any pony. Steve would be mad. You're nothing but a big fat meanie. She rounded on him. Did you just call me fat? I'll have you know that I work out every day to make sure I keep my figure, asshole. Stardust looked over at me with his pouty face. She called me a mean name. I sighed, then looked over at Doorstop. Can you do something, please? I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. He said with a chuckle. It's a little distracting, and they might give away our position. I said, then looked over at Windthrasher. Can you do something? She rolled her eyes. I guess. She flew down, getting between the two. Then she snarled at both of them and spoke with her voice, sounding evil like it did when she was still sharp. If you two don't stop, I'm going to make you. Trust me, you don't want to make me angry. They both looked at the bat pony with her very, very sharp fangs. Solstice finally looked away and walked off. Whatever. I have better things to do. Stardust just started to pout. She started it. Windthrasher smiled and giggled. That was kind of fun. Well done, Windthrasher. Let's get back to figuring out how to get past these raiders. We aren't far from the edge of the city, and Stable 97 isn't far either. We don't know how much longer the brain thing will last on Stardust. I said, going back to look at the raiders. Let's just suit him and get him over with. Stolsa said. Why are we discussing this? Just because they're raiders doesn't mean we have to kill them. We could just... Scare them away? Windthrasher retorted. That's why, I said with a sigh. We're taking the advice of a mutated Pegasus. Aren't you the leader? Solstice asked. I have no idea anymore, I replied. Windthrasher has a better head on her shoulders than I do. I'm not going to just dismiss her because killing them would be the easy way. That's stupid! They're raiders! They kill, rampage, steal, and eat other ponies? Windthresher glared at her. I used to drink pony blood and I got better. Yeah, but from what you said, you were being controlled. That's different from the raiders. Sighing again, I looked over at Stardust, who was still pouting next to Stolcist. What do you think, Doorstop? It was then that I noticed he wasn't with us anymore. Where's Doorstop? He flew off, Stardust said. A loud explosion rang out. Ugh, fuck, I said as something exploded down the road. We all looked over towards the raider camp and saw Doorstop shooting at the ponies. I guess the big guy made our choice for us, Solsa said with a smile. Guess we should go help him, unless the bat thinks we should just stay back and watch him die. One thatcher sighed and face hoofed. Fine. Whatever. I'll stay here and watch Stardust. Sounds good to me, I said. Let's go help the Sarge. Solstice and I both ran down the road towards the other Pegasus, who was laughing and firing at the raiders who were trying to find cover. Before we could reach the camp itself, three raiders jumped out from an alleyway, two holding a rusty machetes, and the third with a brush gun. One tried to take my head off as we passed by. The rusty blade missing me by inches. The one with the brush gun fired at Solstice, who ducked behind an overturned dumpster. I pulled out the sword of my saddlebags and twisted it around, blocking an attack from the second pony's blade. I jumped back to the first, tried to impale me, and stabbed him, 
when he missed. Again, the blade sank deep into the pony without resistance. Either the sword was extremely sharp, or there was something magical about it. I smiled as the first pony died, and the first raider took a step back. Gonna show you what happens when ponies like you step hoof in our land, he said, lifting the blade up in his muzzle, ready to block an attack. Oh, really? I said, charging at him. I swung the sword hard towards his neck. He tried to block it, but it didn't matter. My sword sliced through his blade with only a little bit of resistance. As it did, I noticed a slight blue glow around the edge of the blade as it passed through the machete. Then it passed through the rusty metal. Then his coat, his throat, then his spine. When the sword came out the other side, the pony's head flew in the air, spraying blood all over his head as it plopped it down on the ground. I looked at the blade in my magical grip. Huh. There's not even blood on it. I didn't notice it before, but I hadn't needed to clean the blade ever since I found it. I heard the brush gun go off, and I jumped. I forgot about Solstice. Turning around, the sword, I was ready. I saw that I was worried over nothing. Solstice had somehow disarmed the raider and shot him with his own weapon. She was chuckling to herself as the body fell to the ground, twitching. Traitors are too damn easy. I just shook my head, saying, Maybe for you. Try being fresh from a stable. They aren't as easy then. Now, let's go help door stop. Yeah, I don't want to let him have all the fun. She says as we continue to walk towards the fight. As we came closer to where Doorstop was firing, down at the raiders, I noticed there wasn't many left to fight. Doorstop pulled a grenade from his pocket and threw it down the middle of ponies, shaking as he laughed his head off. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Take that, you poor excuse for ponies! You see why you don't mess with the Sarge? The explosion blasted four ponies into chunks of meat and knocked down a makeshift tower. The tower fell and killed two more ponies that were trying to run away from Doorstop. By the time we arrived, there were only two more left. Solstice took aim with a brush gun. She took and blew his head off with a single shot. I ran in and buried my sword on the other raider's back, pinning him to the ground. He screamed from the pain. I watched him scream for a moment, then ripped the sword out and sliced open his neck to put an end to his misery. Doorstop landed next to me a moment later. You didn't need to come down and help me, small fry. I had it handled. And let you have all the fun, Stolsa said, walking up to him with a grin. I just sighed. I thought there were more ponies when we saw them first. Guess I was wrong. There were. A few of them ran off as I started shooting. He said with a laugh. Ponies like them are smart enough to know when to run like the little bitches that they are. Solstice blew a raspberry. Bunch of cowards, if you ask me. Well, since they're taken care of, let's get going. Not so fast, a gruff yet feminine voice said from up the road. We all turned to see ten raiders slowly walking towards us, one of who was a mare in spiked metal armor holding a rifle in her magic. The barrel pointed at Wind Thrasher, who was just in front of her. Stardust was walking next to Wind Thrasher with the same dreamy look on his face. I drew Dreamwalker and the plasma rifle and pointed it at them. Let them go. Or what? She said. You're gonna shoot me? Sister, let me tell you something. If you even try to take a shot at me or my companions, I'll blow their heads off. I lowered my rifle and signaled for Solstice and Doorstop to do the same. If you shoot them, you'll regret it, bitch. She grinned at me. I see three of you and ten of us. I don't think I need to worry much. Now, tell me why you're on my land, killing my ponies. You're raiders, and we needed to get through. I figured killing you was the fastest way. I said with a grin. No, oh, really? Raiders, huh? You must be from out of town, then. We ain't raiders. We're the survivors, bitch. Doorstop took a step back. Oh, shit. I looked at him quickly, asking, What are the survivors? The ponies from Stables 97, who were able to escape when the Enclave went in and killed most of the population. 
They settled not far from the stable and started killing any pony that came into the lands. They took out three major gangs when the first came to the wasteland. I should have known it was them, he explained. At least one of you understands who we are, she said. Now, we're going to make you pay for killing our ponies. Wait, so you're all stable ponies? I asked, trying to find a way out of this. Used to be. Now we're slowly taking over Winapolis. We're going to take as much away as we can from the Enclave, just like they did to us. That's another reason we can't let ponies like you live. We hate the Enclave, and you have to be the Enclave. She replied. I started to laugh. Enclave? You're way fucking off there. I'm the courier for New Pegasus. I want the Enclave destroyed as much as you or any other pony does for that matter. I'm the one who destroyed Mill City Tower. She gave me a funny look. You're the one who did that? Really? A tiny little thing like you? Yeah, it was me, I said, lifting both guns. Not enough talk. How about you let my friends go, and we'll be on our way. She took a moment, looking at Windthrasher, then Stardust, then back at me. Nah, I'd rather kill all of you and be done with it. You're gonna need more than ten ponies if you want to kill us, Solstice said, coming to stand next to me. And if you hurt either of them, then you'll now have no pony to protect you. The smile on the mare's face grew. More than ten ponies, huh? How about a hundred? She whistled, and as she did, ponies started to step out of the alley next to us. More showed up in the windows of the buildings on each side. Each one was holding some kind of rusty weaponry. Some I could see had even had beat-up battle saddles and stable barding. Doorstop was looking around at all the ponies who were surrounding us now. Damn it, Solstice! You've done it now! Her eyes widened. Me? You're the one who flew down here and started attacking them! Only because you were talking about doing it anyway! He yelled back. The leader mayor spoke up. Alia, shut up! Stardust chuckled to himself. <laughs> Look at all the ponies! Yeah, new friends! The leader mayor looked at him a bit confused. Something wrong with you? He looked over at her with his dreamy stare. I feel like a million caps. Is something wrong with you? Oh, sorry. Is it just your face? <laughs> he started chuckling to himself. She walked over to him and slammed the butt of her rifle into his face. Stardust flew to the ground, blood flying from his nose. You got a problem with my face? I wanted to run over to help, but Solstice held me back. Don't. Don't get us all killed. Stardust laughed a little. No, it's not your fault you were born ugly. Beat him till he stops breathing, she said. Four of the ponies ran behind her and started to kick Stardust in his face, his sides, his broken wings. Stardust started to scream as the ponies wailed on him. I brought the plasma rifle up and yelled, Leave him alone! Without even looking at me, she said, If the unicorn moves or tries to shoot, kill every pony. Doorstop was shaking with anger as we watched Stardust screams fade as he rolled into a ball as the blows hit. I was about to attack her, but Windthrasher was quicker. She moved out of the way of the rifle that was pointed at her, kicked it aside, and dove for Stardust. Two of the ponies who were beating Stardust tried to stop her, but she opened her muzzle and screamed. Both ponies fell to the ground, holding their ears as blood leaked from their eyes. The other two looked away from Stardust and turned to face the oncoming bat pony. She jumped over them and stood over Stardust, who was shaking in pain under her, blood covering her face. Something was wrong. I could see it in Windthresher's eyes. Her normal kind nature was gone. Her eyes were glowing red, and she was baring her fangs. Her eyes fell on the mare, and when Windthresher spoke, her voice was cold. The hissing she had from when she was still sharp came back. Don't you dare touch him! The mare turned her rifle towards Windthresher again. Step away, freak, before you end up in the same place as him. I spoke up. If I were you, I'd stop. I've seen her this anger before, and she's a dangerous pony. The mare looked over at me. You aren't in a place to tell me what to do. She turned back to Windthresher. Gave her the same treatment. I turned back to Solstice and Doorstop. 
We have to do something. I'm way ahead of you, kid, Doorstop said. The rest of the ponies around us were watching Windthrasher as she started to hiss and growl at the ponies who were walking closer to her. A couple of them were holding bats. Another, a heavy chain. Doorstop pulled out a flash bomb. Be ready to fight! And before any of us could do anything, one of the ponies attacked. It was the last thing he ever did. Windthrasher jumped in the air, twisted around, and landed on the stallion's back. She opened her muzzle and screamed into his ear. As soon as she did, fluid started to drip from the pony's nose, ears, and eyes. Another moment later, he fell dead to the ground. The other pony with a bat tried to hit her from behind, but she twisted around the blow and grabbed onto his neck with her fangs. He started to scream, but it didn't last long. Gwynthasher's eyes glowed brighter, and the pony she was latching onto shriveled into a dried-out husk in seconds. She dropped the body, blood dripping from her jaw and fangs. She looked around at the rest of the ponies around her, with a sick smile on her face. Blood. I want more! Kill that thing! The mare yelled as she pushed two of her companions away, trying to get away from Windthrasher. Door stopped through the flashbang. As he did, Solstice and I turned away from the bright light as it went off, blinding most of the ponies around us. When the light dimmed, we opened fire. Plasma and bullets flew at the ponies who were closest to us. I ran towards Windthrasher, who had turned towards the other ponies who were running towards her. They started to open fire, but she flew into the air, letting the hard dragon scales on her belly protect her from the blows. She arched her head down and screamed again, knocking half the ponies over. The rest stopped to cover their ears as her screams echoed off the concrete walls around us. She dove for the fallen ones, of taking hold of a young mare by the neck as quickly as before. She drained her as well. Windthrasher ran for a third victim, but I made it to her in time, blocking her path. Windthrasher, you need to stop this! She slammed me instead, of her fangs bothered. If you don't want to die, Shadow, then get out of my way. I kicked her off me and rounded on her, readying my explosion spell, and I remembered I couldn't do that. Fuck this stupid horn ring! Instead, I took one of the fallen pony's hoofball bats in my magic and slammed it into her face. Snap out of it! The look she gave me after I hit her was scary. I didn't see any warmth in her eyes. She looked ready to kill me. I need to feed. These ponies need to die. They hurt him. They want to kill him. I won't let them. A stallion tackled her, but it didn't do him any good. When they rolled, she twisted in the air and slammed him into the ground with her fangs sinking deep into his throat. His scream came out as a wet gurgling sound as Windthrasher ripped his throat with her fangs, chunks of flesh hanging from her muzzle. She smiled over at me and licked her bloody lips. I pulled out Dreamwalker. Don't make me hurt you, Windthrasher. This isn't you. It's the hunger you told me about. Don't let it turn you back into a monster. She started to laugh as she stepped over her body the stallion. Did you just call me a monster? That's what Dr. Cell liked to call me. His little monster. He made me this way. He gave me this hunger and the need to feed on ponies. I'm not the monster. He is. You're right. And he's dead now, thanks to you and me. Don't go back to the way he made you act. You're the sweet, loving, shy Pegasus who we love. I'm the monster here, Windthrasher. Not you. Don't be like me. She was an inch away from me now. She looked down at me, breathing hard, her hot breath rolling over me. It smelled like copper and meat. It brought tears to my eyes. As she looked down at me, I saw the rest of the ponies who were surrounding us were running from Solstice and Doorstop, who were keeping up a stream of gunfire to any who tried to fight. They must have saw what Windthrasher could do and ran away. Either that, or a solstice and doorstop together were a force to be reckoned with. I'm so tired of you thinking that you can tell every pony when they're in the wrong. But you just think you can get away with anything. She took a step closer, forcing me to back up. Blow up a town with a weapon you don't understand. No big deal, right? She took another step forward. Kill ponies in your stable, and the overmare. Who cares? Another step. Run off and get your friends hurt. No problem. Another. 
Oops, you run away when you think the griffin you love died, and destroy an entire building with innocent ponies inside. It was a mistake. You think whatever you do is a mistake, Shadow. You get a little mad, and bad ponies you kill, and you try to tell me who I am? Fuck. You. I tried to stand tall, but it wouldn't matter. Just because I made mistakes doesn't mean you should, too. Mistakes? You did more than make mistakes, Shadow. You keep trying to make excuses for yourself. We keep trying to help you. You just keep going back to the same thing. When you lose your temper, you kill any pony you see as a bad pony. You even wanted to kill Stardust, who's your best friend. Just because he shot Aura. I don't need... I don't like... Bad ponies, Shadow. And I hate them as much as I hate killing. I will kill bad ponies, even if I hate it. Even if I'm afraid it will turn me into the monster. Dr. Cell tried to make you, Shadow, aren't a good pony anymore. You're just as bad, if not worse, than any of the ponies I've seen in the wasteland so far. That includes the Sins and your mother. So let me ask you, do you want to be a bad pony? Do I have to kill you to keep the wasteland safe from you? She said, an inch away from my face. I didn't back down. Maybe you should. Because yes, I know I'm a bad pony. I never said I wasn't. I don't like what I'm turning into. But I don't know what else to do. But I'm trying, Windthrasher. Do you know why? It's because of ponies like you. Wingnut, Silver, and Laser. You all see something good in me. And I want to be that mare. Even if you really think I'm a lost cause, then go ahead and kill me. Just remember that once you do, you'll be just as bad as me. She cocked her head to the side. What do you mean? You're acting out of anger, because you want to protect Stardust. I did the same, because I wanted to keep you all safe. If you kill me, like I wanted to do to Stardust, then you're no better than I am, you fucking hypocrite. She took a step back, and the red glow in her eyes went away. She sat down, and started looking around at the pony she'd killed. The ones who died because of her scream was still oozing fluids from his ears and nose. The other three she drained of blood looked like mummies laying on the ground. Then she wiped the blood from her muzzle, and looked at her hoof in horror. What have I done? She spat on the ground, trying to get the blood out of her muzzle. No, not again, please, Celestia. I ran up to her and pulled her into a tight hug. It's okay, Wind Thresher. You didn't mean to. She sobbed in my shoulders. Yes, I did. I saw them killing Stardust, and I just let my anger take hold. I knew what I was doing, but I just didn't care. If it wasn't for you, I would have kept going. I rubbed her back. It'll be okay. She pulled away and walked over to the side of the street. I didn't want to do this again. It was like Stable Nine all over again. She then retched and vomited a stream of blood. It pooled under her, making a big puddle when she finished. I gagged a little, but walked over and put a hoof on her, shaking shoulders as Solstice and Doorstop landed a few feet away while they were checking on Stardust. Feeling better? She shook her head. Sorry. I may thirst for blood, but I hate the taste of it. It makes me sick once I have it down and... Come to my senses. You have anything I can drink that would get the taste out of my mouth? I thought for a moment that I remembered the bottle of Wild Pegasus. I have Wild Pegasus. That's about it. I pulled the bottle from my saddlebags and she took a few big gulps. She winced as it went down, but her shivering stopped and she looked calmer. I don't like this stuff, but it's better than nothing. She gave me the bottle back. Personally, I love it. But I have a bad habit of doing things when I get too drunk. She sighed and got back to her hose, stepping away from the puddle of blood. Thanks. I'm sorry for what I said. I was speaking out of anger. 
I shrugged. It wasn't a lie. I needed to hear it. I only care if you're going to be okay. She nodded. I'll be fine. Just don't let me do that again. You have no har how hard it is to keep that thirst down. It's going to take some time for me to fight it off now. Maybe when we get back, we can see if Dr. Gauze has found a way to stop it. She smiled a little. I'd like that. I hugged her once more. Let's go check on Stardust. Then it's to the stable. We made our way over to Doorstop and Solstice. To my surprise, they were just finishing tying restraints around his legs, making sure he couldn't move at all. When Windthrasher saw this, she asked, Why are you tying him up? He's hurt. He was only beat up a little. He's had worse. Give him a couple of healing potions already. He'll be fine, apart from his still broken wings. Doorstop said as he finished the last tie. Okay, then why tie him up? I asked. He took a few blows to the head. Laser said that if a kind of hit could knock him out of the loopiness. I'm taking no precautions. In case he did. As Doortop spoke, Stardust's eyes snapped open, and he started to pull at his restraints. What the fuck is all this? Let me go now, Doorstop, before I find a clever way to rip you into pieces. Doorstop chuckled. <laughs> yep, I think I made the right choice. Stardust pulled on the restraints again. Let me go. Do you know who you're messing with? His eyes fell on me again next. Ah, great, it's you. When I get free, Shadow, I'm going to kill you and that griffin friend of yours. This time I'll make sure she's dead. Then I'll roast her and force you to eat her remains. Then I'll go after the fucking kid. I'll force him to watch as I do even more horrible things to you and the rest of your friends. I'll scare him and scar him for the rest of his life. So badly he'll beg me to kill him. I'll... Solstice interrupted. Enough of this. She pulled out a syringe of something and jammed the needle into his neck. He squeezed, the plunger forcing whatever was into it into his body. Ow! What the fuck did you just give me, bitch? I'll kill you next. Stardust passed out before he could finish his threat. Much better, she said, dropping the needle. What was that? I asked. Knockout serum, she said simply. If you had that, then why did we have to deal with him acting like a fool? I asked. Doorstop chuckled. First of all, that stuff is fucking expensive. And we only wanted it for a last resort. Also, it only lasts for a small amount of time. For how close we are to the stable, it should last long enough for us to hook him up to the memory thingy. Fine. Whatever. Can we go before these ponies come back? How'd you two fight him off so quickly? I asked. Solstice shrugged. They were freaked out when the bats went nuts. And the two of us are fucking badasses. Damn right we are! Doorstop said, giving Solstice a hoof bump. I swear you two are so much like it's scary. I said as I walked over to Stardust and tried to lift him up with my magic. But it was too heavy for the magical ring around my horn. Damn, this fucking ring is making my life hell. Windthrasher came over to me and took the ring off. And the stranger said that only Laser and myself could take it off, and we thought you were ready. I'm taking a big leap here, Shadow. Don't let me down. I smiled. I won't. I turned back to Stardust, and this time was able to lift him with magic. With that done, we walked down the road and exited Rapalus. I was happy to leave the evil city behind me for good. If I ever had to go back to it, it would be too soon. It didn't take us long, once we were out of Winnapolis, to reach the place marked on my map. It was an old, run-down, outdoor theater. A huge metallic screen was at one end of the paved-over strip of land. It was rusted and falling apart. The paved area was cracked, with a few run-down sky carriages and normal carriages that were scattered around it. As we got closer, we started to see posters and advertisements for a movie that was showing at the time. Come see Daring Do, the movie, now playing every two and a half hours. Daring do the movie. Every pony's favorite hero comes to the big screen in a new epic adventure. So, where's the stable? I asked Doorstop as we walked across the broken pavement. 
On the other side of the big screen. Just follow me and keep an eye out for the Enclave. They don't normally go near this place to keep it hidden. But with what you did and with Stardust missing, they might be guarding the area. He said as we watched it and reached the screen, and he started for one end of it. Solstice was watching the sky as she said, How are we going to get in anyway? I'm pretty sure they changed the passcode when you left a doorstop. My dear friend Dr. Limbus is here. She's a good mare. She's the one who runs the memory modification program in the stable. She's not fond of what they do to the trainees, and she said she's more than happy to help me with Stardust. He said. How will we know uh, that she's there when we're at the stable? I asked as we rounded the screen and went to the side where the metal door was set into the screen itself. Thorstop tried to open the door and then swore. Figured it'd be locked. She said she'd do something to notify her that we were coming. The door is never locked. I'm guessing she had something to do with it. Shadow, would you mind? I set Stardust down and walked over to the door. Sure, no problem. But this door is trapped. I'm going to be pissed. The door was a joke. It only took me three seconds to pick it. When that was done, Doorstop opened it and a high-pitched beep went off. It only lasted for a few seconds, but that was all it took for us to draw our weapons, ready for an attack. But no pony was there. Damn! That scared the piss out of me! Doorstop said. Yeah, same here, Solstice said. Enough talk. Let's get down to the stable door. I'm sure Dr. Limbus is waiting. Doorstop said, walking into the door and taking a dark staircase beyond. Lifting Stardust, I followed. Same for the other two. We went down the one set of staircases that led us into a large storage area. It was dark and damp. Rusty empty shelves were lining the area. On the far end, a stable door was illuminated by a dim yellow light, the number 97 on it. Keeping our weapons drawn, we slowly walked up to the stable door. Be ready for everything. It's possible that somebody found out Dr. Limbus, what she was planning, Doorstop said. When we reached the door, I asked, How long do we have to wait? My words were cut off as the door hissed and squealed as it pulled out of its setting. We all raised our weapons as it rolled away. The steam rolled out in the open room. A single pony stepped out. She was a middle-aged mare with a pale gray mane and very light pink coat and blue eyes. She looked at us all and took a step closer. Her cutie mark was a literal diagram of a brain. When she spoke, she had an accent I couldn't place. Doorstop. I didn't know you were bringing so many ponies with you. Doorstop smiled. Sorry, Limbus. I needed all the help I could get. You know how stubborn the cadet is. She looked over at Stardust, who was still knocked out and hovering in my magic's grip. That I do. We need to get hurry. Most of the stable is asleep. But if the Yovamare finds out I open the door, she'll send one of her guards to check it out. We need to get them to my office. How do we know we can trust her? Solstice said. Yeah, I'd like to know that too. I don't trust stable ponies. Windthrasher said. The mare said something under her breath and said, I mean it. We don't have time. I'm risking my life to help you all. Now be careful and follow me. He's right. Let's get this over with. I said, following the mare into the stable. Solstice and Windthrasher both sighed and followed. Door stopped, chuckling a little as he came up the rear. As we crossed the threshold, I noticed a dark stain where the door and frame met. I looked at it and asked, Is that where? Doorstop lightly pushed me on, saying, Yeah, that's where we lost Hailstorm. Now come on, let's get Stardust back to his annoying self. I smiled and nodded. Let's finish this. With that said, we continued on, the door of Stable 97 closing behind us. Footnote! Level up! New perk added. Slayer. You have a knack for using bladed weapons. When you're using a bladed weapon of any kind, you deal plus five more damage and ignore an opponent's damage threshold. You also have a greater chance.